Let's talk about advanced synthesis techniques. Specifically, the synthesis of classic waveforms that uh, is so straightforward to realize with simple analog circuits can lead to serious headaches in the digital domain. Let's do some preliminary setup in this Jupyter notebook first. You can follow along via the link provided in the transcript if you like. We define a helper method that will simply print a time frequency plot, which we will use a lot in this episode. Now, a naive implementation of, for example, a sawtooth will inevitably lead to aliasing. Let's look at this first and then draw our conclusions. We implement a make naive saw function which we pass a frequency. As this is just for demonstration purposes, let's make it short, 0.3 seconds, with a sampling frequency of 44.1 kHz. Next we calculate the total number of samples and make two NumPy ranges, consider them arrays, one for sample indexes and one for discrete time points. Now we compute the sawtooth's period in samples by multiplying the reciprocal of the frequency with the sampling frequency. A naive saw is nothing else than the sample index modulo divided by the period in samples, normalized to a range of minus one to one. Let's make this an interactive plot with a slider. As we crank up the frequency, the aliased frequencies become more and more apparent in the spectrum. They are even clearly audible. So what are our options? Additive synthesis is probably the oldest and maybe the most elegant solution, but it's a little bit counterintuitive as you'd have to programmatically fade out partials that would otherwise reflect at the Nyquist barrier. Heavy upsampling is a brute force method that will render aliased partials practically inaudible because of reduced amplitude. And wavetable synthesis is a simple approach that will lead to decent results in many cases. We will look at another one introduced by Stilson and Smith in 1996. Band-limited impulse trains. The main idea is pretty simple. We can generate a simple sawtooth by integrating a unit impulse minus some DC offset. The negative offset gives us an always falling signal after integration and the impulse corrects this falling signal in regular intervals giving a saw wave. The problem is that the unit impulse itself contains all frequencies per definition, so integrating it will also lead to an infinite number of partials. Let's demonstrate this by making a simple impulse train. We start the same way as before, just that we set every pth sample to 1. To be precise, this is exactly the point where aliasing will have its root. Because in almost no case p will be an integer, we have to assign the unit impulse to the sample that comes nearest by truncating the modulo value. Let's get the DC component of that impulse train and integrate after removing it. Afterwards we also remove the DC component of the result. As you can see in here, there is a fair amount of aliasing present too. 
The idea behind the blit is if we band limit the impulse, we'll have a method to generate a band limited sawtooth. Let's approach it from the other side. The impulse response of an ideal brick wall initializing filter is a sync function. So if you apply the ideal initializing filter to the ideal impulse train, we get a band limited impulse train, a blit. This series of band limited impulses can now be sampled without aliasing. I don't want to delve too far into the math here, let's just say that a blit is defined by these three formulas. Y of n is the sample blit, displayed as a discrete summation formula, where sync m is the digital sync function with m harmonics. Now we have two edge cases to cover. The denominator of sync m will be zero if n is an integer factor of p. And the numerator of sync m will be zero if x is an integer, which will be the case if m equals p. We have to care for these cases by slightly shifting p, otherwise it will lead to instabilities in the generated waveforms. Let's now make a blit. We start the same as before and supply the necessary arguments and make an interactive plot. If we integrate the blit as above, we get a sawtooth, only this time without aliasing. Neat, isn't it? To finish this off, let's look at how we can transform this from a static waveform generator into a dynamic oscillator that you can pass the frequency. First we have to look at how to integrate in a real-time scenario. Obviously we cannot just take the sum of future samples, so we do this with a leaky integrator, which is nothing else than a one-pole filter with a feedback coefficient alpha very close to one. That way we keep the filter stable, that's why it's called leaky. It behaves like a leaky tank that accumulates all water we pour in, integration, but also has a little leak. Second, we need a way to subtract the DC component prior to integrating. Because we do not know how the signal will be developing in the future, we take a running average approximated by a low-pass IIR filter with very slowly decaying impulse response. If we plot that, we see a bump in the waveform, which is nothing else than the running average slowly kicking in. We can assume that both integrator and moving average filter need to be frequency dependent here. We can try that with another alpha coefficient. Let's give it a listen. Sounds plausible to me. 
I did a Max MSP implementation based on a gen patcher. Inside we have all the components we just discussed. A naive saw implementation using just a phaser. A simple impulse train based on a click object. And a blit implemented in this gen patcher. The impulse trains are then integrated here with these two bike widths. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions on the Max implementation.